today we really talked a lot about the character of God. And I hope you all had a chance to really think about what that means for you personally, because every person interprets and understands the character of God differently. And it has a lot to do with um, their experiences, both their experience in church. And I really think a lot of our understanding of the character of God is very much informed by how we were raised as children. I think that our relationship with our parents has one of the most profound effects on our understanding of God and our healing of our origin stories and our relationships with those who are so much more powerful than us uh, has a lot to do with our ability to transform and grow um, in our capacity to be in relationship with God. I've just felt like over my life, I've learned more and more that that is very consistent. There's an amazing scene. I talk about this all the time. If you've been with me very long, you've heard me quote this at least 20 times. Um, there's this scene in the movie, The Crow, where um, the main character who's, you know, I won't go into all the details of the action movie, but he looks dead in the eyes of this young woman. And he says to her, God or mother is the name of God on the lips and hearts of all children. And what he's trying to communicate is he's trying to communicate that basic sense and experience of being cared for and being loved. And whether that's your mother, your father, your grandmother, your auntie, your guardian, whatever, that person who demonstrated that care for you early in your life sets up the expectation of who God is going to be in your life. And so we have this question to answer, uh, which is, what is God all about? And it's such a huge question because our encounters with God are diverse, whether we've had our encounters in religious spaces where it was very structured and there were clear answers or whether our encounters with God have happened in those, you know, strange and fantastical moments when we're out on a hike or out on a walk or we're in a deep conversation and all of a sudden there's some kind of breakthrough, some kind of revelation, some deeper, greater understanding of reality. And I think sometimes we think about, well, what does God need from us, right? We think about our relationship to God in terms of, well, so what do you want from me? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do? Um, and usually when we're thinking in that mindset, we're, we're making ourselves an instrument that God has created where we have to somehow perform. And when Marcus Borg talks about rules and requirements, when he talks about kind of making the grade as one way of imagining God, I think in so many ways it actually limits God because it means that God can't accomplish God's purposes unless we do right. And so then we are just kind of this structured thing for God. More and more, I've been thinking about instead of what does God need, it's more the question of what does God desire? What does is, what is God hope for? And I think about the story of creation in Genesis, and I think about this, this moment before there was anything separate from God, if we can even use that language at all, um, before there was anything. And I think about how how lonely that might have been. And so one of the ways I've come to imagine God's character is to imagine God deciding to separate in order to then be in relationship. That there's some kind of coming apart that allows these two spaces to then look at each other, connect with each other, encounter each other. Now, I know this is probably, um, poorly thought out theology. And so take it as one metaphor amongst many. But I think about God as ultimately just desiring this connection, desiring this relationship. And so when Jesus gets up and reads from the scroll of Isaiah, sometimes we can focus a little bit too much on Jesus claiming to be the Messiah. We can focus a little too much on him positioning himself as the one who will do all of these amazing things. But if we look at the scripture and we look at what Isaiah says, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The actor is still God. 
that Jesus has come to clarify to us who is this God? What is the character of this God? What is this God all about? And everything that's named in that passage from Isaiah is about the people that have little and are little regarded, the people who are on the outside, who find it difficult to get along in this world, who find it, who find themselves not only just having their personal struggles, but also their personal struggles within a context of social disenfranchisement. I don't know how many of you have ever read much about the social theory of disability, but the social theory of disability basically says the reason that people are disabled is because the society is designed to not allow them access. And that when a society is designed to include everybody, disability reduces within the population because ability is available for everyone. So you think about the Americans with Disabilities Act as an act of reducing the social creation of disability by creating ramps, by creating elevators, by assuming that those folks should be able to access buildings, should be able to access resources, should be able to have support. Things like having translators available in, um, in courthouses, right? Without a translator, you don't have access to justice. And so it's about how do we create a society that is designed to include everyone? You know, it's interesting even thinking about COVID. Um, there was this commentary I was listening to where they were talking about how the government was saying, well, you know, most of the people that are dying from COVID are people that have autoimmune disorders or other underlying health conditions. And there's this whole organization that supports people with autoimmune disorders and underlying health conditions and disabilities. And they say, so what you're saying is our lives aren't really all that important because we're just kind of the throwaway people who die from this disease. And I was like, oh, wow. I have, I have said things that would lead someone to believe I thought that. I have minimized the impact of COVID because it was only harming these people who we assume would be harmed anyway. And it was very convicting for me to realize that yeah, yeah, sometimes I unconsciously believe that there's worthiness is not equal amongst people, that some people are more worthy of protection, more worthy of access, more worthy of support uh, than others. And so when I think about my relationship with God, I don't think about God being mad at me for not believing in the worthiness of all people. I think about God kind of constantly trying to invite me to see, hey, you say you believe that, but then sometimes you don't. And I don't think that God does that in order to, you know, make me feel bad or make me think that I'm unworthy or that there's something wrong with me. It's more like, I want you to see the world more like I do. I want you to see the world more like I do. I want you to see the world more like I do. Oh. <sighs> And God, if there is a person who I feel has called me to see the world more like I think God does, it's been Jesus. It's been following in this path. It's been the constant reminder, hey, this person's worthy and beloved. Hey, this person's worthy and beloved. Hey, this person, this person is worthy and beloved. And how incredible that has been. And so what is God all about? What is the nature? What is the character of God? I think ultimately God is all about relationship, all about connecting us one to the other. And that also means that God is all about dismantling, destroying, plucking up and uprooting all of the things that we have created and all the things we have believed that suggest otherwise. All of the barriers and boundaries that get in the way of us seeing one another as beloved children of God. So with that, I want to send all of you out into the world to discern what it is that God really is all about in your life. Where is God actively at work opening up and inviting you into that fuller, greater, bigger picture of reality? And then maybe, you know, where is God speaking to you and 
you know, like the scripture says, um, it's being fulfilled in your hearing. It's coming true because you're now hearing it, receiving it, perhaps even believing it about yourself and about everyone else.